Okay, can we talk about this Drake allegation that just came out? I am in shock. Matter of fact, I take that back. I'm not in shock. You want to know why I'm not in shock? Because this is the type of stuff that has been going on in this industry forever. These are the people I grew up with. These are my brothers. We have this special connection with each other. And even if we don't see each other every day, it's like we pick up where we left off. You're going to get an exclusive here. It wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? Who it is, when it happened, where it happened, I have no idea. It made me wonder immediately about who was being hurt. Quiet on set lied. I don't like this story. I'm done. I'm done. Last night, the quiet on set producers or the team had a huge discussion everybody was gonna i guess come together to talk about the documentary do you think they invited me my name is amber and like as you all know wait what's the line hey everybody i wanted to let my fans know that i'm taking the board exam to get my manicures license bam i kick your teeth <laughs> Quiet on set lied. Quiet on set, the producers of this documentary were definitely a little bit less than honest, and I was not intending to make this video, but I've been supporting this documentary and telling everybody to go watch this documentary, so I think with the last coverage that I did with my two documentaries that I posted on my own channel, talking about Quiet on set and comparing that to Abby Lee Miller, and going through the Amanda Bynes story and the Drake Bell story and what really happened to them and all that, that I definitely owe it to you guys to talk about this story, even though this is not what I was planning for my next video. I did have some documentaries that I've been working on, um, one on Judy Garland, one on Marilyn Monroe, and then possibly Toddlers and Tierras. But, quite on set, they lied to us. They have not been honest. Have you guys seen the last episode of Quiet On Set, by the way? Like, did you watch the fifth episode? It must feel good to have all your voices elevated in this particular project. And I would love to bring out your co-stars. Giovanni, why don't I put you here in the middle? They lied to multiple people that did Quiet On Set and came to do the documentary. Allegedly, they didn't even tell the cast members, the people that went through this trauma, they didn't even tell them what the documentary was about when they came to do these interviews. So actress Raquel Bolo. No, <laughs> you see, trust me. Um, See, this emergency only can happen once. Eddie is totally dependable. Doing? He is also a great musician. <laughs> We like you. We'll give them to you at face value. How much is that? $40. $40? The tickets are only $10. That's not face value. It is if you value your face. I'm Sheila, so back up. So you're voting for Amber, right? I really haven't decided who I'm voting for. Sheila, see if you can help this girl make up her mind. <laughs> In my office. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I had to come for a funeral. Wait, you knew T-Dog? No. So. California. You seen any movie stars? Did you meet Lil Bow Wow? I got a big complaint. Let's hear it. Okay, tonight I was trick-or-treating and what do I get? This. You told me that I was going to play chicle. And Mark Summer. Mark Summers has joined us. And uh, you probably recognize Mark because for 10 years Mark was the host of Nickelodeon's Double Dare and family double there <laughs> both of them were lied to they came out with their stories so raquel bolo who you probably know better as raquel lee is a voice over artist and actor and you probably would know her from the proud family smart guy she was a series regular on the amanda show and she continued to act through her adult life as well and mark summers was exactly who oprah said he was mark summers has a picture perfect life a beautiful home a great job and a loving family i was having a good time because all I ever wanted to do was host a television show. Mm -hmm. But then you, you take um, what was going on on that show and uh, multiply it, and you do it because, you know, you have a mortgage and bills a to mortgage. pay. 
So Quiet On Set met up, basically the producers met up to have a discussion and a panel meeting around the documentary the day before yesterday. And they didn't even invite Raquel. So she had to come be used to go through all of her trauma so that they had substance for the documentary. If it's not Drake, it's somebody else. And that's a fact. Now I see a lot of comments like, oh, all of a sudden he wants to come out with this information. Oh, all of a sudden he wants to talk about it. People need to remember when you're a child, you process things very differently than adults. So if it took him 10, 20, 30 years to realize that what was being done to him or what he was subjected to at that age as a child really affected him and his decisions later on in life, he's entitled to that. You cannot tell a child who's been abused when they should come out or be secure or feel confident to share their story. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of self-reflection. It takes a lot of just personal internal work to even realize or even to admit that something happened to you. And the fact that I was on this show, I was on the Amanda show. I started that show when I was 13 years old. And I will never forget how young, how impressionable, it was crazy. So the fact that he was going through that, like it just, it, 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 it hit me in my chest to see that. Because what I'm beginning to understand is that this was an environment that all of us were in. This was a toxic, toxic environment. It's unfortunate. Because we were kids. We were kids coming to do something that we love to do. So to put us in a situation where we were not protected, we were around pedophiles and people who did not have good intentions. You know, I mean, what are we supposed to do? When this documentary, Quiet On Set, comes out, even I am going to be watching with my mouth open, I'm sure, because I don't know what's about to come out. I don't know what else was going on on the Amanda show outside of all of the crazy things that I personally had to experience on my own at 13 years old on that TV show. Okay. That TV show is actually the show that changed the complete trajectory of my life because I want to say that that was the first heartbreak that I actually experienced as an actress, as a child actress. At the same time, seeing this and knowing that Drake went through this, it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. He's not alone. You know, there's so many of us child actors who have experienced inappropriate behavior from adults at that time when we were on these shows. People wonder why do people go crazy? You know, look at our show. Look at the Amanda show. If you've got all these different people basically losing their mind at some point, what does it lead us back to? You know, even me, maybe I wasn't famous enough for everybody to care what was going on in my life, but trust me, I went through my share of stuff too. So, you know, this show, it's crazy so many years later to come back into my life and I'm now having to face the truth that I did not know that I was living in at that time. So... I don't know. I'm just, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm a little bit emotional. I need to work through this because, you know, it just answers so many other questions. And I can't wait to see the interview because I had no clue that he was going to be a part of this documentary. And I just don't know what I'm, what I'm in for. If you are going to be watching Quiet On Set, let me know. Talk to me in the comments. Like, I, I don't want to feel alone in this situation. So if anybody else is just as shocked as me, like, can we begin the conversation? Show Drake some grace right now, because at the end of the day, if he's willing to be this vulnerable and, and share what was going on, you have no clue for how long it's been dark and deep hidden on the inside of him. It's nothing to play with. And the only thing that us child actors asked to do was to be actors. That's it. We didn't ask to go on these shows and 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 be sought out by these pedophiles. That was what was coming, you know? But that was not what we signed up for. So give us all some grace. Because trust me, Drake is not the only one. 
And then they had the audacity to not even invite her to the conversation going forward about how this is going to promote change in the industry. That's wild to me. Here's what Raquel had to say. I'm done. I'm done. Last night, the quiet on set producers or the team had a huge discussion. Everybody was gonna, I guess, come together to talk about the documentary. Do you think they invited me? Do you think that they even thought about inviting me to this type of discussion? And let me tell you what my problem is with this industry. Quiet on set, they did the same thing that the industry always does. They get what they want from you and then they're done. Never did they think that I would want to be at a discussion like that or a part of a discussion like that. Like, really? This has actually been a very, very difficult thing for me to face. This is what has happened in my career over and over again. This industry has done nothing but hurt me left and right from since I was a child, okay? It is what it is. And I'm tired. I'm tired of the people in this industry. I don't care for an audition. I don't care to be on nobody's set. I don't care for nobody to recognize me for the work that I've done quiet on set. First of all, you don't even tell me what type of documentary that I'm gonna be a part of. You never question whether or not this is gonna be triggering for me, okay? That's number one. Number two, it comes out and you tell me, oh, you're gonna be in episodes number one and number four. And then you call me the day that the fifth episode is about to come out and you say, hey, by the way, just to let you know, you're also in the fifth episode. But you forgot to say, oh, and we're also going to be having a panel discussion to talk about where you are today and how we can move forward. You want me to share my story, but you don't want to involve me in the actual narrative of change? No, I can't do it anymore. I've given it all I can. I don't have nothing else. The show, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to get back to my family, my businesses. That's what I'm focused on because this industry, y'all can have it. I was very upset with this because for one, there's been people talking around saying like, why did they not have trauma coaches and stuff on this set? And we saw that Drake Bell actually checked into rehab right after the filming of quiet on set. He shares that dealing with the trauma of the abuse led him to self-medicating, explaining, quote, I was not recognizing myself, saying his actions were just so out of character for not just who I want to be or who I want the world to see me as, but who I know I am and how I know myself. The Drake and Josh star also reveals he sought help in rehab. So it's like, were there not anybody around trauma coaches? Did they not actually care whatsoever about how they were impacting the people that have already been abused and impacted by this entire system and all of these people over at Nickelodeon. And now they're just going to use them up and eat them all up again and then spit them out, washed up. Like what in the actual... Uh but that brings me to the title of this video, which is that they lied on Quiet On Set. They didn't even tell the cast members what this documentary was about. This is what Raquel had to say. All right. I feel like I have so much to say, but at the same time, I haven't 100% processed everything the way that I need to. In the past week, week and a half since this documentary has come out, I have had to go through a few stages, right? I think the first stage is the initial shock. And then I think as time goes on, there's the aftershock. I think currently what I'm in is the aftershock. I've had a lot of time to just process and, you know, really, really go internal and ask myself, what is it that I'm feeling? It's been really hard to see all of the love and all of the support and everyone saying, you know, you're so brave and you're so strong and all these things, right? It's been really, really tough to receive that because if I'm honest with you <laughs> that was not even the tip of the iceberg that was nothing <laughs> compared to what was coming for me as a child actor one of the things that I need to be clear about is that I did not know the documentary that I sat down to do an interview for that was what was going to 
be coming out in that documentary. So as the world watched, I also had to watch painfully, very, very painfully. I had to watch what Drake had gone through and I had to tell myself, wow, you didn't know that this was what you were going to have to start facing in your life. There is a lot of stuff that I have kept bottled up for so long because I have not felt safe to say anything. And when I see Drake so uncomfortable telling something that happened with him and changed his entire life, I have to face my own truth too. And there's a lot of people who aren't going to support me. There's a lot of people who right now are, I'm sure, you know, feeling their type of way about me, but I don't care. I don't care how you think or feel about me because at the end of the day, my life and my story and my truth is my own to live with. And I'm a mom now. I have children. I owe them something. Also owe myself something. So some people, other actors in the industry may say, oh, well, I don't know what she's talking about. That never happened to me. I never went through that. Yeah, well, that was you. I'm me. He's him. And I'm sure we're not the only ones who have had to deal with some childhood trauma surrounded by our career. I have not had the strength to face all the things that I know that I need to face. But this documentary has forced a conversation on myself that I did not know that I needed to have, nor was I ready to have. I'm still processing and I'm still needing to figure out what is gonna be best for me. What I will say to the Quiet On Set producers and everybody involved in this project is that I don't think anybody realized how triggering and how much trauma this would bring up for a lot of people. And I am hurting and I need to get through this. You need to remember when we started the Amanda show, it wasn't on social media. There was nothing like that back then. I didn't have a community of people telling me, hey girl, we looked up to you. We loved seeing you on our screen. I never heard that. But now I'm realizing that there was so much stuff tied to who I became, to my career, and to who I am today. It's time for me to figure out what route I need to take to really get my healing. And I'm sure a whole lot more of my fellow child actors need it too. Because the PTSD is real. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a lot to say about this because for one, People feeling some certain type of way about Raquel. I feel like nobody should be feeling any type of way for Raquel except for 100% supportive. Because it's exactly what she said. You may have had a different experience than she did. And I think that is completely wrong for the other people that were on Nickelodeon, like the cast of Ned's Declassified, to be entirely dismissive of everybody that was on the Quiet On Set documentary, as if their experiences were not valid. Like, just because you didn't go through the same things doesn't mean that it did not happen. Then for two, I think that it's absolutely corrupt that they used these artists to come on and do this documentary without telling them what it was about. And for three, I think that it's awful that they didn't have trauma coaches and people on standby to help people after they went through these interviews and to prep people for the content of the interviews. Like, this is just wrong. And then Mark Summers says himself that he was ambushed, who went on a podcast and told us how they lied to him as well. He walked off the set because they actually lied to him about what it was going to be about. You're going to get an exclusive here. Yes. I got called by these folks saying they wanted to do a documentary on Nickelodeon. And so I said, sure. And I went there and they asked me what I thought of Nick. And the first... 10 or 12 seconds from what I understand this documentary are me saying all these wonderful things. But they did a bait and switch on me. They wow. ambushed me. They never told me what this uh, documentary was really about. No way. And so they showed me a video of something that I couldn't believe was on Nickelodeon. And I said, well, let's stop tape right here. What are we doing? Well, we're doing this thing. Do you know this guy? And all this kind of stuff. And 
I left. Okay. So I got a phone call about six weeks ago saying, you're totally out of the show. And I went, great. Then they called me about four weeks ago and said, well, you're in it, but you're only in the first part of it because you talked about the uh, positive stuff of Nickelodeon. What they didn't tell me and they lied to me about was the fact that they put in that other thing where they had the camera on me when they ambushed me. And, um, no way. Yeah. So um, now we get into a whole situation about um, who's unethical. That's a very interesting. I had wow. no idea. I was wondering about so many of the interviews that they've done and how they did it. I never met Dan Schneider. Know. When we got done doing Double Dare and we had run our run, those people came in after and took over our studios. Never met the man. Have no idea about any of those things. I mean, I know Keenan uh, from Keenan and Kel because we've done stuff together. But um, as far as anything that happened on that show with any of those people, I, I never met well, anybody. No I didn't know anybody. Right. But they made it seem like I knew yep. those people, they right? They definitely did. Yeah. Wow. They knew Ethically, they should have said something to you about don't that. Don't you think? And given you a shot to say, I don't know him. I shouldn't even be there. You're, if I knew something, I, maybe I'd come talk to you, but I don't. Is there anything you can do about that now? or? Well, there's a phone call coming in today at 3 o'clock. Blows my mind. It's literally like you just see what the industry is full of, honestly. Because it's like they don't care. They wanted to make another good documentary that made them some money. Do they actually care about the victims? It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's more performative activism, honestly. Also, if my eyeball looks weird or red today, I just got an eyelash in it and now it's all red and inflamed and I had to put Vaseline on it and it's a whole thing. But anyways, did you guys watch the fifth episode of it yet? Because when I watched it, it definitely looked like it was rushed together. I don't know who this host is, but I'm like, do you care about these people at all? She's like giving the most placid, unresponsive, or, like, fake responsive facial expressions as if she's totally uninvested in the stories at all. You know, as soon as I saw Shane, I was like, my Papa Bear is back. Like, I'm it, Papa Bear. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> as soon as I saw Brian, I was like, my little bro. Like, it, yeah. like, no time has passed. And it's just disheartening that it had to be this. Mm that brought us back together again. They look like they just scrambled together to host a, like a podcast type interview and sold it off as an entire fifth episode. And by the time that the episode finished, it felt like they had just finished introducing an episode. I don't know, it's like nothing about it felt like the first four episodes. But anyways, that's it from me for today, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought of this video because that was a mess.